Do you work in a workplace that has become feminized, people at home? Mm. Uh-oh. This is going to be controversial. Let's go. The American workplace has become more sort of feminized, let's say, um, simply because we put women into male space. And as a result of that, as a result of accommodating women's uh, needs, feelings, uh, you know, we, we've empowered women to become these sort of independent, you know, strong, independent women. And so we take that. So we have to take that to its logical conclusion, right? So we put them into the American workplace. Well, what do they do when they get in there? Are they just as competitive as men? Are they just, no, what they, that women tend to focus on their condi- the work conditions. That's why you have uh, companies that never had like pregnancy leave. And I'm saying this is actually a good thing. I never had pregnancy leave. You put women in the, into the situation and they say, we really need to get pregnancy leave as a, as a benefit. Okay, good. You know, most companies, you know, foreign companies will do that too. That's a, that's that I can get behind. Then you got bagel Tuesdays <laughs> and then you got talent shows that's and true. then you got ball pits. Yeah. It's Brad's you know, birthday. Time. Let's have a you cake. Got, you know, child care. <laughs> okay. Got... Stop there. When you said the bagels, <laughs> bagels I lost my mind because it's true. It's true. And this mm-hmm. is that this is what I'm talking about though, that I think sometimes women, there's that defensive reflex, mm-hmm. but just sit back and realize that you as a female, like ladies at home, please. Mm-hmm. Like I would be somebody that would want that bagel Tuesday. I'd be like, Oh, it'd be so fun. You know, you know it, own it. So this is interesting to me, though, because I think there is some truth to this in terms of how women are when they get into these spaces. And because we crave that work-life balance so much, Mm -hmm. I think we try to then bring it into these work structures. Mm -hmm. However, in the modern world, I think that you now have that being led by women, that movement, and feminized men. Mm -hmm. There are so many men I know, so many men, particularly in the cities, they want to turn work into a playground. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like they want to behave like a small child and, oh, let's play little games. Let's call it team building and spend the whole Talent day. Talent shows. Yeah, ping pong mm-hmm. for everyone. Yeah. I mean, so there's yeah. a, a there's a two-tier problem. You have women behaving as you might anticipate women would, and now you have men behaving like women mm-hmm. and advocating for the same Absolutely. things. Do you agree or disagree? Yeah, with I would definitely agree with that. Uh, the What I was getting into in that clip. So I have uh, I'm, two, two names to remember here. One is Josh Fluke, and the other one is Aaron Clary, who's a very good friend of mine. John, Josh Fluke as well. Um, when I started thinking about this, and I, I this was a result that you're giving very recent clips. Thank you very much for not going back in time and <laughs> no, no, getting the time that. machine for me. Um, the, I've, I've written several articles about this, and I know that uh, Aaron Clary has written as well about this, is that when you put women into male spaces, they tend to try to assimilate that male space into something that is more comfortable and more, more uh, feminine friendly. <laughs> And um, I've, if you've read, I think it's my second book in, in preventive medicine, I actually have a chapter called Male Space. Um, I was listening to the channels, of, I think it was, it was Josh Fluke. Josh Fluke, is, he was a coder who kind of be, got into the hustle economy and then he becomes a, a, a very popular uh, YouTube channel guy. And he was talking about the American workplace and one of them was about how women come into that workspace and then suddenly there's a ball pit that shows up here, you know, like it's like the, you know, the place playground at Dis or at, M- at McDonald's, right? You know, there's a, there's a, a bagel Tuesdays. That's where I took it. Sorry, Josh, I stole your line. The bagel Tuesdays, right? Or a talent show, or uh, we need a team building or we need this. Mm-hmm. And it's, it becomes more about the social aspect and making the, the American work life tolerable for women who are coming into the American workspace. And so it ceases to become a, a, uh, a competitive hierarchical organization. And it it then becomes a more communitarian organization. I was saying before, Mm -hmm. when women organize societies, it's all about communitarianism. It's all about egalitarianism for men. It's hierarchical. Who is the, who is the, uh, the chief, who's the, the CEO, the CFO, and then on down the hierarchy down to the janitor, right? Right. Same thing in the military. Who's the, who's the admiral, who's the general, who's I'm going to, and Mike's going to roll me over here for this, but like all the way down to the private, right? We do chain of command. There you go. Um, and that's just how men organize society. It's like, it's by merit. Ideally it's by merit. And so whoever does the best job earns the more money. So that there's been experiments and research done on this where they will give men a certain uh, amount of resources and women like money or whatever. And they'll say, okay, distribute this. Women tend to distribute the, uh, resources more evenly and egalitarian, like Mm. one for you and one for you and one for you and one for you. And guys will go, uh, okay, uh, Rob, you did a better job than, than Joe mm-hmm. over here. So you're getting $10 and, uh, Joe, you did a great job here. You get, you get $7 and it's like on down by performance as opposed to, uh, like, you know, who gets, who gets what. And so, um, when you take 
the female way of organizing society and you put it into the American workplace or you put it into the US military for that matter, or you put, you wanna know where all this sort of wokesy agenda comes from, all the idea that we can have a quote unquote, you know, it was AOC or talking about like it was a democratic socialism. Like how are we even having this conversation in the United States right now? Well, the reason is, is because we put so many women into the politics since 1965, right after mm -hmm. hormonal birth control, um, that that sounds like a good idea right now. When we say, guys, don't go to university right now because it's a socialist, communist indoctrination camp, you know, major universities, yep. or don't send your daughters there because she'll go in as this puritanical, you know, Bible study <laughs> girl and she'll come out looking like, you know, Lena Dunham afterwards. <laughs> Like that's like the reason why that is, is because we're looking at a, a an education academia is is almost entirely assimilated by the female imperative. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So socialism sounds pretty good to, you know, call it, you know, to, to 77, 80 percent of your uh, teachers from the time you're in preschool all the way to you get to post grad. Mm -hmm. um, so. It's, this isn't me just sort of like trying to, f you know, ramrod, you know, gender politics into everything. It's like you can look at every every step of the way, whether it's the American workplace, whether it's politics, whether it's religion. I wrote a whole book on three years, took me three goddamn years to write the, the fourth book to show people that it's being the religions are being assimilated. The political process is being assimilated. They used to be male spaces that women are, that men, you know, feminized men bring in and want to have in that space, and it fundamentally changes the space. Mm -hmm. And I use this, uh, this example, it's like when the WNBA was a thing, for a while, they couldn't get anybody, they couldn't put asses in the seats. They didn't have, it was very unpopular, nobody cared about it, and so what they're, they were seriously discussing was to have, uh, to lower the baskets. They wanted to, because the girls, because <laughs> life under the, that you couldn't dunk, you know, the life under the rim is pretty boring, right? So they were actually talking about changing the game, fundamentally changing the game by lowering the basket so the little ladies could dunk, right? And maybe that would put asses in the seats. What happens is you've changed the nature of the game to suit the playing abilities of the participants. So when we say, um, and of course this is coming to bite people in the ass right now because now we wanna believe that you know, men and women are just the same. And, and so, but if they were, then we wouldn't need to lower the baskets in the WNBA. We wouldn't right. have to go and do those kinds of things. But what happens is, is it fundamentally changes the nature of the game. Mm -hmm. So when you put women into the American workplace, it ceases to be this uh, group of hierarchical guys forming a corporation to compete against another group of hierarchical mm -hmm. guys who want to kill, want to, you know, at least you know, buy, buy you out at the, at the very nicest or completely destroy you. And so you've got this healthy competition in capitalism mm -hmm. in hierarchical corporation after hierarchical corporation. When you put women into those organizations, the first thing that they do is they look for, uh, how do I, how do we make this, this experience? I, I, this is supposed to be success. So how can I make this success, which seems pretty miserable, more tolerable? So I need daycare. I need pregnancy leave. I need a ball pit. I need bagel Tuesdays. I need a, a birthday ball pit. Whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah, I need to turn it into the play area. But so, but I mean, I'm I'm exaggerating, no, of I course. Know. But Sometimes. what happens is some you, companies not so. So what much happens is those corporations that were, in some cases, very successful corporations that have been around since the you know mm. the turn of the century. Um, become something other than what they were. It's like the WNBA is not basketball if the if the net is down here. Those corporations don't stay the same right. as they were before. They become less competitive because you have be, because they become more female friendly and more mm -hmm. more uh, feminine specific. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, that I, we want to say you know we really 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 want women to like be. Uh, be these you know go-getters and these alpha females and then you get somebody like uh elizabeth holmes mm -hmm. who we really wanted to be the female version of steve jobs to the point where we're putting her face on on the cover of forbes and all these mm -hmm. magazines and she's she's the second coming of, mm -hmm. of of steve jobs they really really wanted her to be uh you know the this kick ass you know they wanted her to be elon musk whatever and now she's, I think she's going away for 17 years. Is that what, mm -hmm. what it is for yeah. fraud or something like yeah. that? And that's, that's the desperate, that's the social narrative that is so desperate to see, to see a woman in a male, uh, uh, in male space and mm -hmm. that we will completely try to change reality to fit the fact that she's, she's a fraud. She's yeah. absolutely well, a fraud. Well, it's, it's to try to make it, you know, fair, 
gender equity, fair and balanced, all these words that they often mm-hmm. throw out. Well, actually. lowering the baskets would make things fair, wouldn't it? Well, that's true. And but that, it changes and you, the game. You also see that with lowering of standards. We've had conversations. I don't know if I had it with you. Military but combat. To, not yeah. only mm-hmm. military, but firemen, police mm-hmm. officers. Mm-hmm. This is a, a topic we're talking about all the time. In fact, the other day I talked about sports, and I was talking about Megan Rapinoe mm-hmm. and how she wanted this pay equity, but the reality is that people just don't care about women's soccer the same way they care about men's soccer. Mm-hmm. The money's not there because people aren't going to the games and they got the sponsorships it too. didn't they get it there. didn't they get it the soccer team I, I don't follow sports really well, I thought it was talk I, about I, pay equity. I, I, so here's my here's here's my funny story about that Izzy. she said she was gonna get it though by the way she so was like if that's gonna... so if that's the case if they deserve to be paid more then I'm gonna go start an OnlyFans <laughs> and I am going to raise bloody hell right. for not making a hundred thousand dollars a yes. month for selling pictures of my white ass <laughs> On, on OnlyFans, and Energy I'm going to demand y'all. that I make $100,000 a month as a top 0.4% creator because that's mm. pretty much... Ain't nobody want to see my white ass. Yeah, the difference is, though, that the only person that would be screaming for that equity for, would be you. It would be, just be you alone on an island. And yeah. the difference but is that's that how when, rid- when that's it comes just to, how ridiculous when it comes to Megan Rapinoe, mm-hmm. there's a whole team of media and whatnot interviewing her, talking about this. Because, again, it's, not, it's about the visual of, like, they would rather have an equal number of men and women doing something and have that reduce the efficiency of what's going on than mm-hmm. actually have more men and less women and have the efficiency kept at the top, whether you're talking about police, firefighters, material military it's not about anything but this impression of equity what's well, performance based is what it is it's like if your performance well, they is don't so want it to good. be performance based. well no of course because the, the female way of organizing society is is uh, one for you and one for you mm. and one for you and oh jill you're pregnant here's two for you and then one for you it's mm. this equal distribution yeah. at the cost of of competitiveness that Megan Rapinoe, she's she she's very popular because that's the narrative right now because right. we're in a gynocentric narrative. So when that's why I use the OnlyFans example <laughs> yes. right there, right? it was just ridiculous. But it's ridiculous because we can see that it's merit based when girls are competing with girls mm-hmm. on OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. But if we're gonna say, oh, we want to, can can girls play this game too, guys? Right. Can we be in the clubhouse too? <laughs> Well, it's not, it's, again, it's uh, opportun- uh, equality of opportunity versus equality, equality of, outcome. of outcomes. And so equality of outcome is almost always going to be communitarian, mm-hmm. one for you, one for you, one for you, whereas performance-based is hierarchical for men. So yes, the, when you're playing competitive sports, you're goddamn right, it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's hierarchical. I mean, and you're talking about it, and we're going to get to an MSNBC clip in a minute I want you to see, but you're talking about it in terms of how women organize versus men. Mm -hmm. And there are so many men now, now, though, I call them, you know, I talk about modern women a lot. We also have to talk about modern Mm -hmm. men and what that means. They are so feminized. Also, they're oftentimes socialists. Mm -hmm. They're outright communists in many respects. They're really arguing for the same things that you're saying that women generally lend toward, lend themselves Mm -hmm. toward. It's the same view of the world. It's that same, like, equality of outcome. It's that same, let's make everything look equal. That's all that matters, even if, you know, performance suffers, even if it's in the worst interest of the country. I mean, you're talking about the military. Those are the people that's supposed Mm -hmm. to be on the front lines. Mm -hmm. These people don't care. In fact, I would argue that in many respects, those people are trying to destroy the military and destroy the country. When you can't ignore it anymore, uh, when you can't ignore that the number 463rd best male swimmer is the number one female swimmer Mm -hmm. in as a transgender athlete. That's yeah. unignorable. And by the way, has has anyone seen any female who has become a transgender and become male? Are they competing at that same level as mm-hmm. men in those sports? No, you don't hear about them at mm-hmm. all. You only hear about it going the other way because we can see the performance difference mm-hmm. between a man and a woman. In they won't sports. talk about that, though. They'll just make sure you got your pronouns and your Twitter bio. And if you're on the, on the cool team in the cool club, that's all that matters I should also people. point out, we just talked about suffragettes and all that stuff yeah. a minute ago. Um, and since we're, we're on this topic... Uh, it's no coincidence that Marxism started right around the same time as uh, mm. the suffragette movement, and they found they found common cause together at that time. Because when you look at communism, you look at so well socialism, then communism. Uh, it's uh, they're they're very so similar that they make good bedfellows, mm. and so um, both of them of, are are based on a. Uh, a failed or a false uh, understanding of human nature because if you go and you look at Marxism it's based on a, a uh, an understanding of human nature from like the early 1800s or the right. 16, 17 1600s right 
Uh, same thing for the suffragette movement at that time. So that's how you get those, like the the list that you wrote there just a moment ago. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's uh, it's a demonization of of a certain class. It's uh, against the others, tribe versus tribe, but it's based on a faulty way of thinking about human nature. Which, by the way, we have a much better education of today in 2022.